So the question that we get asked the most by far is all about the toilet. Where do we go and how do we get rid of the waste? So in today's video, we're gonna address just that. So if you haven't guessed already, yes, this video today is going to be about the toilet. Um, we have another video about the toilet, like how it works and why we, why we went for this specific one and more info about the toilet, we'll put a link up there. Um, but this toilet is more about emptying it, where to empty it and yeah, some examples of emptying it. Yes, because if you're building a van just for a getaway or for full time living, you will inevitably have to deal with your number twos eventually and you can't quite just flush and forget like you would do in a house. No, you have to deal with it um, so sometimes it can get a little bit messy. What happens? I got a splat. <laughs> yeah, in the smallest bit but still poo is poo. So on the topic of mess, we just want to give you a little word of advice. When opening a chemical toilet, if that's what you decide to get, make sure you pull the little opening door thing before you open the lid, otherwise you might get an unwelcome splat on the face. <laughs> so yes, in this video, let's get up close and personal. You get to witness us emptying our toilet. We're not going to show you the actual physical contents will blur that out or something because it wouldn't be very nice but we filmed it in three different locations for you to see uh, how it might be for yourself if you choose to go down this route just before we show you that though let's cover the other options of toilets that you may choose to have or lack thereof so the first option would be having no toilet in your van perhaps your van's too small or you just don't want one um, you normally would have to go to a public toilet in gyms parks supermarkets um, which obviously can work if you're going to be staying in urban areas but for us we didn't we don't like to stay in the urban areas you want to be as far off good as possible for us it really wasn't an option yeah and also like i i think of things like late at night for example if you need mm. to use the toilet for an emergency and shops are closed park toilets are closed like yeah but that is an option obviously yeah. um truck stops and stuff like that have toilets as well um, one one step up from that would be to have a shovel this is really for only if you're off, off grid obviously if you wouldn't do it in a city but we have a shovel here and we have used it on occasion when we've been off grid primarily because we want to stay off grid and we want to stay there for longer and if we didn't have the shovel it would mean having to drive back to a city to find a dumping point to get rid of our toilet yeah we used that shovel for a month and it was really good because we didn't have to go somewhere to empty our toilet we could literally stay in desert we were in mm. desert in spain at that point it was really nice and so. you fill the hole back in Leave, no, Leave trace. no trace, very important. Um, the next one is a bucket and bag, which you can make yourself quite easily. Um, just get a bucket, size of your choice, um, and you can get like a toilet seat cover thing and you put the plastic bag around, put a toilet seat cover on top, or you can buy like a foldable, it's like a fold out chair kind of thing, and mm. that is like got a toilet seat on it and you just put a bag. And there's that, but we didn't choose that option because we didn't want to waste the plastic, so. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of waste if you're a top plastic. Yeah, if you're using a plastic bag every day or two mm. people or I use it and then you use it, let's just not go there. That's yeah. not plastic. So. Which brings us to the last two options, R1, the chemical toilet and also the compostable compostable toilet. Yes. And it's a bit different to the chemical one in the sense that you have two containers in the toilet, a uh, section for your Wii, which is then separated when you're doing your business, and a section for your number twos. And then you have to take the weeds out quite frequently because apparently that really smells but you don't have to worry about the number two so frequently because they just compost with a coconut husk or sawdust or something that you use mm -hmm. um, we chose not to go for that route because we found that they were quite a bit bigger than the chemical ones and also we didn't want to have to cut a hole into our van mm -hmm. to have an extractor fan to get rid of all the smells yeah and the else. fan might have had to have been electric we we, we didn't we had we have a very very simple build yeah. here a uh, very cheap and simple and we didn't want to have extra electric extra holes and all that stuff so yeah. we went very simple and we ended up with a chemical toilet it's so small and compact isn't it and um well it's not that small but if you know we can we may we do yeah, our we unit around it. it's underneath this chair if you've mm. seen our other videos you might yeah. know that it's just under there uh and so yeah with the chemical toilets the main disadvantage of them is you have to find somewhere appropriate mm -hmm. to empty them and there are not everywhere 
um, you might have to go to specifically to a campsite especially in England you definitely have to do that because we didn't really find any options yeah. but in France and Spain it is really really easy you can find um, like designated black water dump stations mm. in a lot of places for free as well sometimes you can find the petrol stations um, and you have to pay like a few euros pounds if you're if you're not using the services there um but yeah you have to be really careful obviously because you're using chemicals in it you can't just put it anywhere in the wild so no very important. um but with that basically you know you, you do your business it all goes into one container the flush chemical mixes with the con chemical that's already in there it all kind of disintegrates not that well and then you let it fill up to how much you want it to or until the smell gets unbearable and then you have to obviously empty it. Um, but the smell isn't bad at all. I mean, we, we've we used the blue and pink ones in the past, the Elsam one, and really, really good. It masked the smell completely. You couldn't smell it at all, could we? But we've been using the organic green uh, one. Well, it does smell if you leave it partly yeah, five days. Yeah, if you leave days. it a long time. If you've got like a hefty amount in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, especially after a journey when it's all been shaking around. Um, yeah. But the green organic one, we it's found it doesn't mask the smell that well at all. But um, a little top tip from us, as the wee is the most oh. smelly part of it, we actually don't do wees in our toilet. We have separate designated, separate, we don't use the same one, separate wee pots or pee pots um, for that. Um, the main and then, reason being that if we were weeing in the toilet it would as well be filling as doing up number really twos, quickly. we'd have to empty it every so every yeah. couple of days. So it's easy for Jake, obviously you can just go outside and do a wee if we're in nature or we've got wee pots in here, but yeah, the toilet, we don't need to empty it really frequently because we don't wee in it, so that's that. And anyway, so let's get on and show you some examples of if you do choose to go the chemical route, what you might get to experience yourself. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> So this is what the van looks like when we're ready to do all the jobs. We have the toilet out, we have that, we put our little mat to the side so we can slide things out and clean it easily. So this is how it works. Top bit comes off, bottom bit goes over here. Okay, a nice big hole to nice aim big in. aiming hole. Sometimes it's a Sometimes you've got to aim down a tiny tube and it's really difficult, isn't it? Yeah. Like, well, I don't know, because I don't do it, but I'm going to assume that. Yeah, so you just undo this part and then you pour and hold your breath. Pour and hold. This is why Jake practices Wim Hof breathing, it's so he can just hold his breath while he's there. Uh... Okay, I don't think people need to see this. <laughs> We cool it now. <laughs> this one is the organic one, which we really wanted to get before, but we didn't. So now we've got it. Um, it's just green. There's only one. You use one for inside the flush bit, and the same one for inside the actual toilet. Um, and then you don't need two. So hopefully it's good. We haven't tried it yet. We'll let you know. So this is a garage petrol station and they actually have a little WC thing here. So we filled up with petrol here so we can use it for free, otherwise it's normally about three euros. So let's empty our poo. One then. This is a lot messier than normal because I didn't realise the power of that hose. We found another dumping point, and this one is a free one on the side of a motorway, which we haven't come across before. So it's quite good, interesting. Let's see how it works. Classy on the side of a motorway, I like it. I prefer the quiet ones compared to the one where you're in the middle of a car park and everyone's like, <laughs> Why are you shaking it pre pour? Is there a top tip for anyone you want to give? Or? Oh, we've recently gone, so. <laughs> Jake did one this morning, so. Recently it's... been for a poo, so I'm just going to have to let it go. Anyway, we're going to pour it in here, you don't need to see that. 
What happens? I got a splat. <laughs> yeah. In the smallest bit, but still, poo is poo. <laughs> what people really want to know is how's the smell? It's alright. It's alright. Nice See, it's not actually that bad. It's not that bad. Shake it around. Give it a good rinse out. That wasn't quite clear water, so we'll go again. Keep going until it runs clear, isn't it? And then while Jake's doing that, I take the opportunity to sweep everything and sweep behind the toilet because even though our toilet's in its own little cubby hole, um, when it's windy and we're near the beach, a lot of sand blows under there. So I'm going to do a big full sweep while Jake's doing that. And then by the time I finish, he'll be ready to put the toilet back in. A bit of water in it so we can have a little bit of water for the chemical to dilute with. Not much. The last thing to do is give it a little clean up in case you've got any backsplash and then put it away. Jake's having a grand old time cleaning the toilet so I'm going to leave him to it. Are you enjoying yourself? Well, uh, clean as I've made the toilet. He is time. enjoying himself, I promise. <laughs> This isn't your typical multibacterial spray. We've actually put the toilet fluid in here because it came with a child lock, which <laughs> I'm ashamed to say beat me. So we had to cut it and put it into here instead. So that's why this is in here. Yeah, funny story. Our friend Vincent, Vincent and Yang, they, we met them in, well, we were hanging out with them a lot in the Tabernas Desert. And then they gave us this toilet stuff because they didn't like it and then we couldn't open it so I had to literally like stab a hole into the side of the pool to get into it. Child lock is too uh it's too confusing for us isn't it? So if you haven't already seen our last video we made about the toilet it's got more like information and I do recommend checking it out because it's quite a funny little comedy sketch at the beginning of that but I'll let you know anyway our toilet is the Thetford 165 Porta Potty which is I think the biggest one. Yes and because it's the biggest one you can see from those videos it's not the easiest to deal with and it really is hit and miss hit or miss as to whether it will be an unpleasant messy job or not. Um, we've been doing it for over a year now and well just about a year and obviously we've had to empty it a fair few times um, sometimes you get lucky you get a nice big hole sometimes you get a small one sometimes you get a low one sometimes you get a high pole high hole you gotta try and lift it up into yeah and if you are like on your own doing this or if you're not on your own doing this you're not that strong be aware that some of the toilet emptying things are quite high up and when mm. it's full it, I don't think I could lift it like it's quite yeah. you have to take that into consideration as well like and strangely, the holes that are smaller seem to be the ones that ricochet splash back a bit more than the ones that are bigger. But I think the main thing to do is to try and let your toilet waste disintegrate as much as possible so it's as liquidy as possible. And also don't let it fill up because it's quite a large toilet what we've got and we kind of do like to maximize the amount of time that we have to empty it. So we do let it fill up before we empty it insider's access and then um it makes it a lot more difficult because obviously you've got to navigate a much heavier yeah load. so if you have got the option to empty it more frequently with smaller amounts then that's yeah. probably easier basically which in england is really not very easy to do but if you're venturing into europe you'll find lots of free and cheap services to be able to do this which make it a much better enjoyable experience I yeah. wouldn't say enjoyable because it's still empty and poo, but you know what I mean. But it's just easier to find. Yeah, in England you'll be probably paying for a campsite just to empty your toilet, but anywhere yeah. in France and Spain you can pretty much do it for free in loads of different places. There's loads of camper van services, which yeah. is really good. And we found that the best thing to do is give it a little I found the best we give it a little slosh, empty it, and then if it's not running clear, put some water in it, slosh it around and empty it. That way you'll actually get rid of all the smells as well as all the uh contents. Yeah, and that's it, is it? That's all the is that it yes i believe so um that's really it we was a quite a short video from us today just giving you a bit of an insight we're currently planning our trip around the uk yes um we're gonna be here for a while now um and we're looking forward to taking you on our next adventure and we'll let you know when that is yeah we'll keep you updated and we will see you 
next Sunday. Don't forget to like this video if it oh, helped yes, you and you. subscribe. And it really does help. And we thank you so much if you already are subscribed because it really does help. And yeah. we love creating these videos and you seem to enjoy them. So thank yeah, you. And if you do want to see a little bit more day to day, random day to day stuff, I've got my Instagram stories, which is She is the Lost Girl. I'll put the link in the description, but I just post little bits and bobs of what we're up to each day. So mm. it's more chill. And next week, we'll tell you about some stickers. Ooh. So we'll see you then. Yeah. That was really painful. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>